we have introduced resolution rule, have we? That if you take any two clauses A and B and there is a literal P in A and its negation not P is in B, then the resolution will be deleting those two literals and joining all the remaining together. Okay? Okay. So, we just introduce with that. Say A is a clause. So, once we say clause, it means it is a disjunctive clause in this scenario and then it is also a written as a set. So, we go on writing clauses or even clause as or sub literals, any time we can think of this as a set of literals, we will not write them explicitly, any one of the notation we will be using. So, A is a class, B is also a class and we have a literal P which is in A. So, that means A looks like some literals or P some other literals. Then we also take not P belongs to B. So, here just a comment, when you say P it does not mean it is a variable, it is a propositional variable, it can also be a literal. Suppose it is a literal, then it can look like not of Q, in that case not P will be not of not of Q, but it is written as Q simply, double negation is assumed throughout. Fine. So, in that sense when you say P belongs to A, not P belongs to B, it does not give the constant that it has to be in the not P a propositional variable form and this has to be a propositional variable, it is not that. With that understanding we are giving the notation here. Then you say that resolution of A and B these two clauses with respect to this literal P, sometimes if it is a variable we say with respect to the variable P. Okay. So, P is called a biform variable here, if P belongs to A not P belongs to B, it is called a biform variable or a biform literal, biform literal is more appropriate, but once you know P is a variable you also say P is a biform variable. So, you say give a comment P is a biform literal. So, we define resolution of this as A minus P, take out P from A, then similarly take out not P from B and then take the union. So, here union means what? You are getting a new class, where some literals from this and the literals from these are there. So, once as a set it will be ors of all those things, right. So, it is equivalent to deleting P, deleting not P and then or them together. Right? Is it clear? So, this we will be calling resolution of A and B with respect to the biform literal P. Sometimes we omit the biform literal. If it is very clear what this P is, we just write resolution of A B as an informal notation. So, also we write this as resolution of A B if P is clear from the context. So, let us see an example. Say I have uh, P or not Q or R, this is my A and I have B as say Q or not R. Okay. Now, I choose my biform literal to be Q or say not Q, any one of them you can say, biform literal is this. Then what will be the resolution? So, I will write resolution A B with respect to the biform literal Q. Now, look at the definition here. We do not say B minus Q is not permitted, since it is written in the B minus not P form. There are convention works. Once you say it is with respect to Q or with respect to not Q, they are the same because of the convention, because not not Q is taken as Q itself. So, now this is equal to you delete this not Q, delete this Q, so you get P or uh, R or not R, right. You could have also chosen R as the biform literal, right, because R is there, not R is also in the other. So, I choose that A, B, R. Now, once I choose R, 
and not are here i would have the other things as p or not q or q is it clear then should i write this also this could have been any one of these two if i don't fix the context right should it be p No, I am just looking at it formally. Forget the semantics now. I have this class. I have this class. So the procedure says omit one from the other, not of that from the other, right? So I choose this, choose this, I get this. Choose R not R, I get this. Why not Q not Q R not R both? Then I get P, right? But that is not permitted. That is what resolution doesn't define. You have to fix a literal and then do it. You cannot fix both the literals at the same time, right? So this is not permitted. That is why this notation really helps. Which literal you are fixing accordingly, it will be taken. Though you write resolution AB, you have to keep this in mind that you fix one literal and then write resolution of AB. Otherwise, it will have no meaning. We will see shortly what is the reason. Okay? Let's see the reason. why you are doing it the reason is if you take a and b as a set of two propositional or two propositions it will really entail resolution of ab with respect to whatever literal you have chosen okay this entailment is really semantic entailment so it says choose this proposition a as propositions you are thinking this is a class fine that is also a proposition so if you assume a and b you can deduce resolution of abp or this consequence is a valid consequence that's what it says now you can prove it it's not difficult to prove let's see so to prove this what do we do let's rewrite it here whatever p you choose now suppose how do we prove it if you have not forgotten you start with a model of the set of proposition sigma then so that that is also a model of w right so you start with suppose i is a model of a and i is also a model of b since this is possible so that means you have p as a literal which is occurring in a and not p is occurring in b or otherwise you could have started with not p belongs to a and p belongs to b they are similar right so let p be a literal in a and not p b in b okay now then how will a look like it is a class where p is there so p and some other literals so let's write it as say l1 or l2 or lk or p similarly b might look like some m1 or m2 they are all literals or mn or not p okay now i is a model of a so you don't know of what it satisfies it might satisfy any one of them only that is also possible right so let's bring out two cases this i satisfies p or it doesn't satisfy p there are two cases so let us take first case if i satisfies p then what happens i does not satisfy not p okay so look at b i does not satisfy not p 
but I satisfies B, therefore I satisfies the other one. So then I satisfies M1 or Mn. Right? In that case, I satisfies resolution AB. Why? Because resolution A B P equal to L1 to L K or M1 to M N. One of the R C is satisfied. So the whole thing is satisfied. Is that clear? So here the reason is since resolution of A B P equal to L1 or L K. Or M1 or Mn. Fine. So that gives case one. Next case two is if I does not satisfy P, then I satisfies. Okay, we don't need I satisfies. Huh? Let's go there itself. If I does not satisfy P, then we look at A. Okay. I satisfies A. So what do we get? I satisfies L1 or LK. Is it clear? I does not satisfy this. It is evaluated to zero, but the whole thing is evaluated to one. Therefore, whatever remains that is evaluated to one. Then job is over. Okay. Then I satisfies clear. That's the end of the proof. Therefore, resolution A B P is a consequence of the set A B. So, if you have a C and F having two classes A and B, you take the resolution. It is really implied by the C and F. Fine. Now let us come back to our problem. What happened if you cancel both the laterals? Right? In that case, what was happening? You have A as P or not Q or R, B as P or Q or not R. There was no P, right? Q or not R. Okay. So, in that case, suppose I take any interpretation which satisfies A, which satisfies B. Will that satisfy P alone? I want to show that no, it is not necessary. So, the counter example should start with taking P equal to 0, right. So, take I an interpretation. Is that I of P equal to zero, but I have to satisfy this. So I also take Q as zero. That is satisfied, right? R I take R as zero, right? Okay. Now what happens? I satisfies A because not Q is one. All the others I forget. I don't need to see. I satisfies B because not R is one. Okay, but I does not satisfy P. So I see that A, B does not entail P. Okay, clear. So that means what we have done earlier should not be allowed. It gives a hint because we want this to be preserved. A B should enter resolution of A B. Fine. So that is why we have defined resolution in such a way that two variables if are there, P not P, Q not Q, they cannot be cancelled simultaneously. Only one of them can be cancelled. Is it clear? 
Now, let us see an example how to proceed here to go for the resolutions, what resolutions it can give us. So, say resolution of not P or Q, not Q or R. So, by form variable is Q not Q, that is the by form literal here, I fix Q and not Q. So, the other one remains not P R. So, I can see that it is not P or R. To be specific, we should have written here semicolon Q. Fine. Okay. Resolution of not P or Q with P. Now, P is the by form literal. So, that gives Q. Resolution of not P or Q with not R, I cannot take. It will not give anything. It cannot apply, right? Because in not R, there is only one literal not R, and R is not here, so I cannot do anything. Now, anything else I can do with not P or Q? Nothing. All are over. So let me start with the next one: not Q or R. With that, I don't have to go back. Right? It is already done. A, B, or B, A, they will be the same by the definition. So, I go further. P, I can attack. Not R, yes. So, R, not R goes, I get not Q. Okay? And with P, not R, nothing can come. That is all I get. So, this says that if this is my set sigma, then sigma entails not P or R because of that result. Sigma also entails not Q, sigma entails Q, right? all these are con consequences from the same set of premises. Right? So, once they are consequences, I can take further resolvents, I can apply resolution again, they will also be consequences, is it clear? Okay. So, I choose these ones now, so I get that is my second stage. So, resolution of not P or R with what? Q or not Q, nothing can be taken. Okay. So, only these two can be taken. Okay. Let us take that with Q, not Q is this is the crucial thing is empty set. So, that is according to us is bottom. Fine. So, this says that sigma is unsatisfiable, because sigma entails bottom. Okay. So, you see that sigma entails bottom, therefore, sigma is unsatisfiable. So, you can prove unsatisfiability by resolution. Right? So, now target is to derive bottom somehow. So, you do not have to go everything like this. In fact, this was useless, this was never used. So, if you know the target possibly some simplification can be done. Okay. Then we can write it as a proof. Fine. So, the proof means I will introduce one as my premise not P or Q, then I would have introduced my premise as uh, P. Right. Then I conclude by resolution Q. Okay. Next line I introduce not Q or R that is already there. No, I introduce this as a premise. Next I introduce as not R as a premise. Then I find out not Q. Then from Q and not Q I take resolution get bottom. Hmm. Any doubt? Yes. See, there can be one class A which can be used many times, it does not limit us anyway. Last step resolution of Q and not Q. So, these are two conclusions, these are two conclusions from the earlier premises, right. Now, by our result, it says sigma entails Q, sigma also entails not Q. 
So, whatever they entail, that is also entailed by sigma. Right? Is it clear? So, I can use the resolvents, they are called the resolvents. Resolution of A B is called a resolvent of A and B. So, resolvents can be further reused. Fine. So, if you write it as a proof, we will be giving the same line numbers and so on. So, let us rewrite it. So, I have sigma equal to not P or Q, next not Q or R, P not R. So, I would start a proof this way. My first is not P or Q, which is a premise. So, I write H as a hypothesis. You can write P also for premise. This is already in the set. Now, second line I will introduce P, this is also a hypothesis. Right? Now, third I will derive from this Q by using 1 and 2. There is only one rule here, right? the rule of taking resolution. So, I do not have to write anything M P, M T, nothing I have to write. There is only one rule, not many laws I am using. Right? So, we will just omit it, give the line numbers. But what is the rule? Yes. So, if you have A, you have B, then from this you deduce the resolvent. This is our rule, right? Let us give it a name. It is called resolution for proportional logic. So, by rule RPL, I can do this, provided P is a biform literal. So, that means P should be in A, negation should be in B, or not P is in A and P is in B, if that happens in that case only. Okay? So, here you should have written RPL. Anyway, there is only one, so we are omitting. Next, what we do? You can see what we have done there. We have to derive not Q from these two. So, I introduce them as hypothesis not Q or R, that is a hypothesis. And fifth line, I take not R, which is a hypothesis. Sixth, from these two, I conclude not Q as a resolution. It is going smoothly. Next, I take 3 and 6 and get bottom resolution from 3 and 6. Okay. So, such a 3 column style is called a resolution refutation of sigma. Let sigma be a set of clauses, a resolution refutation of sigma is a finite sequence of clauses. Okay. Each of which is in sigma or is obtained from earlier two clauses by an application of the rule of resolution. Okay. And the last clause is bottom. That is what we have done here in this refutation. It is a sequence of clauses. This is the sequence of clause. Okay. So, each one is either in sigma, which are written as H or is obtained from earlier two. This one is obtained from last two, this is obtained from those two, this is obtained from these two. Right? And the last one should be bottom. 
fine. So, once you have a resolution refutation of sigma, this should tell us that sigma is unsatisfiable because of that result. Is that clear? Again, that has to be proved by induction on the length of this finite sequence. Because one step you go, it preserves entanglement, many steps you go, it also preserves entanglement. That is what. Then we define, suppose we just generalize it a bit. If gamma is a set of propositions, and W is a proposition. A resolution proof of gamma n times w. So, here what should we do? We want to show gamma n times w. We have only a resolution refutation. So, we should use reductio ad absurdum. Bring not w to this side, so that it is unsatisfiable. And unsatisfiability can be proved by resolution refutation. But you need CNF. Right? You need a CNF. So, what we do? We write uh, it is resolution proof is a resolution refutation of what? Of gamma union not W. But I cannot write gamma union not W because in the resolution refutation I need this to be a set of clauses. So, gamma union not W first must be expressed as a set of clauses, then of that set it will be a resolution refutation. right? So, we write that as follows, it is a resolution of resolution refutation of uh, okay, C n f of say x such that x belongs to gamma union C n f of not w, is it clear? So, he says you take each member from gamma, convert that to CNF, that is its CNF representation. Then take the CNFs, they are really clauses, right? but we need clauses, not this. So, it should be what? Union of each CNF, it is not CNF as members, there should be sets and they are union. right? So, it should have been union over CNF x. Is that clear? So, this should be something like this, because each C n f of x is a set of clauses. So, take all those sets of collection of all those sets of clauses and take union over those. Right? Is that clear? If it is countable, it should be or it is finite, then you can do it in a better way. You may write C n f of x i and then this itself is a clause, so forget this and then take union over these things, right? union of all these things C n f of x i. So, C n f of x 1 union C n f of x 2 union C n f of x 3 and so on that gives you the set gamma. Right? So, that we write this way rather. It is just a notation, so read it carefully. It says you take an element of gamma, convert it to CNF, not take the clauses, not take another x, another element of gamma, convert it to CNF, take all these clauses, put them together, continue like this. right? So, you get a set of clauses which is obtained from the each member of gamma. Now, that becomes a complete set, full set. With that, you add C n f of not w, right? then consider resolution of that, resolution refutation of that. Fine. So, that means, reductio ad absurdum is already inbuilt in our definition. Is it clear? Okay. So, that means, suppose we revisit this example, I would have given this sigma in a different way. I would say that, I will take my set gamma equal to this gives me p implies q okay, and 
q implies r this is my one proposition there another proposition is p right i would say so that these entails are okay then what i do i take cnf of p which is p itself okay it will be p then another set bracket huh? now cnf of this will be this class this class and another bracket their union okay so it will be p another bracket then cnf of not r that will also be union with this so that will give not r is it clear so all that we have to do is starting from this we first convert it to cnf and then get this set get a resolution refutation of this in fact to use that result we don't need this resolution refutation we can always start from this directly and derive r the results are allowed right but to make it uniform we make this way put reduction or absorption then always we have one fixed target bottom it is just to make it uniform there is no need otherwise you can always think of this and derive r is it okay for example here what should we do we could have started with this set not p or q not q or r p and tells r this is what it is right p is kept as p p implies not q and q implies r is written as not p or q set not q or r two classes and p is there so and tells r then resolution would proceed how yeah okay let's take these two not p or q then two i take p three i get q okay then i introduce not q or r hypothesis then fifth will be r that's all okay that could always be done Uh, the same form we are going to take the conjunct plus uh, the disjunct plus of the same and then and then make a union of all those so in that case we are actually making it um, uh, by doing so we are making it not equivalent to the actual proposition it is it is equivalent why is it equivalent suppose in gamma you have x1 x2 xn right now you want gamma entails w right now gamma entails w means x1 and x2 and x3 and x4 and xn implies not w is unsatisfiable right sorry implies w is valid which will say x1 and up to xn and not w is unsatisfiable so when you convert to cnf each one you can convert instead of converting the total thing because they are all ants is that okay so that's what we are taking cn of x1 cn of x2 cn of x3 so once you take cn of x1 that will look like one class c1 and c2 and c3 and cm that is same thing as writing a set of c1 comma c2 comma cm do you see what's happening clear so here also you could have done some simplifications to make it uh, clear how we are proceeding instead of this style of proof you could have written as a graph okay so what do you do you start with that set p and then you take p with this resolution is q okay then with q and this you get resolution as r fine so you can see it as a directed acyclic graph 
this happens to be a tree here, but always you may not get a tree, there will be crossings, right. So, you may get a directed acyclic graph. Let us see this resolution refutation. How do you see it as a directed acyclic graph? Almost the same way, with not R only, you have to proceed, right. Yeah, so we have another premise here as a not R, then you take R, not R, that gives not R. Same thing, all the things are there, only not R is not there, right. So, I have all these premises now, from there I get bottom. Yes, and that too, and that too, one liter and the other one has to be negation of it. Ah. Yes. 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 That whole class is taken as a node. Is the level of that node? Two classes are together considered as. See here, this is one node. This is another node. Right? This is another node. Now, from these two nodes, I get one here. Suppose you have P or S here, right? P or S, then you would get Q or S here. That is all. You are not getting two, you are getting one. They are odd together, is it not? You are taking union, no? A minus P, union B minus not P. So, that itself is a class, it is one single class. There are not two here. Okay. Fine. Okay. What about this? So, what does it tell us to do? Here, this is a set. This is a set of premises. So, first thing it asks is to convert everything there to CNF and put them in a as a set of clauses. Okay. So, first not P or Q that gives P or Q. Okay. P implies R or S which is not P R R R S. R implies T and U. So, that is not R or T and U, which is equivalent to not R or T and not R or U by distribution. So, you have got a CNF. Now, as a class set, you will be taking one class as this, the other class as not R or U. So, you will be writing as not R or T, another is not R or U, that was your doubt. Then let us see u 1 not s implies not t. So, that gives not of u 1 not s or not t which is not u or s or not t. So, I get not u or s or not t. Next not of this. So, this is not s and not q. That is all. Okay. These are the two clauses in that. In not S and not Q, I have the two clauses. One is not S, another is not Q. So, I put a comma instead of and. Fine. Next, negation of this. So, not of not S implies Q, which is not S and not Q. Again, I get oh, that we have done. This is the same thing, both the sides. Okay. It is already there. So, as a set, I do not have to do anything. Hmm? One is negation, another is simply that. So, once you take negation of that, it will be added to this. It is same thing as that. I do not have to add anything here, new. So, now this is my set. Fine. From which you have to get the resolution. Okay. 
fine let us start should you need a bigger board okay let us copy it here Now, what should we do? Start taking resolutions, that is what it says. So, it is usually easier if you start with the unit clauses, where there is a single literal, then resolutions will not increase the length, right. If you start with others, resolution might give you a class having bigger length, more literals. So, let us start with that. Say not q, where there is q, p is there. So, I take with that. So, I get P okay. Now, you can start with P itself or not S also, let us start with not S. So, these two give not U or not T fine. Now, with P I get R R S okay with not a second I get R fine it is not a tree because of this because these things can be reused. So, in general it will be directed a cyclic graph there is no cycle formed, but it is not a tree right if you reverse it it will be a tree from R you will get a child S from not you or not you also you get the same child that is not possible in a tree. Okay. Now, you have R here, R or S that again gives not S, also this gives T with R, also with this I get U. Fine. Is it okay? Then I have not Q, I have not S, I have P, R, not S is there already. So, I need not have this, this is wasteful. Already I got not S. So, getting not S from these two is wasteful, it does not help, right. But you can get so many wasteful things. So, what are the things I have got? Not Q, not S, P, R, T, U. Yes? Something? Not U or not T with U, if I take, what will happen now? this will give me not T right. Now, I have T somewhere T is here. So, I get but is that right. Okay. If you rewrite in some different order, these crossings might not be there, huh? but we are not worried about that. Which one? That is fine, does not matter. Bottom, not we can imply P. What is wrong? Huh? If P is true, P is valid, not we can imply P. R and R or S should give S, not not S. Huh? From this, I am getting R or S. Uh, uh, check for this.
we are getting it from uh, remove this this is not correct okay anything else verify everything now huh Well, just go back, see what are wasteful, what are not. You wanted bottom, so it comes from not T and T. Now T you are getting from R and not R or T, okay? And not T you are getting from U, okay? From U and not U or not T. Is it correct? Yes. On U you are resolving. So you can verify now. This you are getting from. Not S, so that is cancelled. So you get not U or not T. Then R R S comes from P, and not P that that is cancelled. So R R S. Not Q, and uh, P or Q that gives P. So it is equivalent to telling if you don't have it here also, it will be alright, right? Do you see? So suppose you don't have this here, your gamma is only up to this. Fine. Still, it will enter because not W will add this. Is it clear? That's the redundant premise there. 